Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today is the first day of November. Make sure you take that hashtag November. That is not a misspelling, it is actually our hashtag for the month. Make sure you take November. put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up, as well as our saxophone smackdown that's coming up in February. We have our clinicians about set, and we have a description on the website for that so you can see all of the information you can read it down on our website and if you take neovember put that in the comments below and we select your name you can get 15 percent off tuition and it's already discounted it's a super deal en discount entrance fee is already discounted yeah. but you can also win uh 15 off any of the courses that we have coming up next year there's one coming up right away in january and it's going to go over advanced key fitting techniques called saxophone key fitting. And that's going to be with Ryan Walker, who's also... Uh, Hi. He's, he's, oh, there, there you are. Right, I'm here. Uh, I'm back. I'm we, gone. We also have uh, coming up in, no, uh, in December is a free Neopad clinic. So if you want to get down and dirty with Ryan for free he's going to be live on zoom december 7th december december 7th <laughs> december 7th uh that's going to be 1 p.m eastern time so if you're on the west coast you just have to ask your supervisor if you can yeah, take, take a long lunch take a long lunch hang out with me on mm -hmm. on on zoom and uh, as you say get down and dirty that's right it's a free clinic so we can get down and dirty and uh, you're doing neopad so it's probably not going to be that dirty no, it's gonna be no pretty clean very, and, very clean yeah very quick. clean hygienic very good way to do your padding so, Ryan, we so, do have a winner for today. Oh, okay. uh, the winner is Timothy L. Lloyd, 496. Congratulations, Timothy Lloyd, 496. Send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and I will get you your discount code. Now, Ryan, you were in the Down Under. You were in Melbourne. Well, my, my, my images, uh, images of myself are, well, really all over. But yeah, specifically in Melbourne, yeah, I, I zoomed in for a, it was a NAPERT, National Association for Professional Band Instrument Repair Technicians. It was a, uh, a regional or kind of a national conference for Australia. It was two days and I zoomed in on the first day and I talked about Neopads. I had okay. the world's largest Neopad. I had this sax. I had a couple other demonstration things. So I'm in Neo mode. Okay. Very Hashtag Neovember. So that's right. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, well, oh, welcome right. back. You you were away for a couple. Of weeks. I was. I was. I was away. I was touring. I was following the Grateful Dead around. Um, then I realized they weren't touring, so I, I came back. So yeah, it took me a month, but whatever. Okay. I'm back. It's it's great. I'm well, fine. We're glad to have you back. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm <laughs> fine. Fine. Somebody noticed I showed up to work. Oh, so uh, Ryan, we we've talked about where you've been. Let's go over. <laughs> Let's talk about where I'm gonna go. <laughs> Let's talk about the difference between traditional pads and neo pads for those who don't know about that, yeah. and what goes into them, and then we'll talk about the tools they need to change a neo pad. Absolutely, absolutely. So we have our super up close cam here. Let me scooch off over to this side. Uh, okay. I'm going to scooch a skosh. Okay. It's my skoshin. So for those of you that are not familiar with a standard or traditional, we're calling them traditional now because we have neo pads. So yes. a traditional saxophone pad. I deconstructed one here. You can see it's kind of a little bit of a sandwich of a cardboard backing, a felt inner, and then wrapped with this tan leather, which I believe is uh, sheepskin. Okay. okay. Um, so this is our standard tan leather. A Neopad, for those of you that are not familiar with Neopads, uh, it's one of the things that we uh, developed here at Music Medic. Two years of research and development. It is a self-leveling pad poised to revolutionize the world of saxophone repair. Um, like I said, it is a self-leveling pad. The construction is similar yet different uh, rather than going with a cardboard backing we have this it's a firmer more of a plastic backing and there's that little magic right in here that's our insert which is part of that self-leveling uh mechanism uh the inner is a synthetic felt okay so it's not a natural felt it is a synthetic felt and then the leather is exactly the same which is the great thing about neopads is they, they look aside from the sticker on the end of the rezzo, it looks like a traditional pad. Uh, and I've done it where I've had pro players in town come in and I will replace, let's say, their bottom five pads with neo pads, and the rest of the pads look exactly the same. It's this 
uh, tan leather with the brown plastic resonator. Um, and then the biggest difference is when you get any traditional pad, you can put kind of any type of resonator in there. They usually come with either three or four millimeter holes. If you're working on bushers, we can punch them with busher holes. But with Neopads, really we have just one option for right now. Are we going to have a metal resonator? That's, that's a good Come question. In. Don't interrupt. Uh, but yes, yes. Eventually, 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 calm down folks. Okay. Uh, we will have a metal resonator option. But we decided for right now just to go with the brown plastic. Uh, it's been working out great for us. And you can see a lot of manufacturers are using the brown plastic. Yes resonators so right. that's the difference between a traditional pad and a neo pad all right ryan very good let's go over the tools that we're going to need absolutely for changing a neo pad or okay. installing a neo pad so here we are with our arrangement of tools we can go back to the overhead the over overhead we got the overhead and then the underhead I guess. the overhead uh let yes me, gotcha this is perfect yeah so you notice for you repair technicians that have done uh, saxophone padding or any kind of padding before, you notice there's no heat source. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't have a torch. I don't have an air torch. I don't have any kind of open flame. There's not even a big lighter mm -hmm. out on my bench. Okay, nice thing about Neopads, I don't need heat. Okay, I do have my leak light and I do have a battery pack. I like to use a cordless leak light. This is for double checking afterwards. Um, some prep tools. And if you sign up for our free Neopad clinic December 7th, there it is. All right, quickly, read all the tiny prints. Okay. <laughs> Before you write in, we're going to make that picture available, and you guys are going to be able to read it a little bit easier, but yep. it is a free Neopad clinic. I will go over some prep stuff. So I will go over why you might need a rawhide mallet, a steel bench block, and our Music Medic pad club, cup and tone hole pliers for uh, prep of your pad cups. Okay. okay. So I have that out. Uh, I also have prep of pad cups. I have a scraper. Okay. Uh, I have this stuff right here, which is uh, just basically the debonder for the CA glue. And I can use this to loosen up any adhesive in here. Okay. I have my actual adhesive that I will be using to install the Neopads. There it is right there. This is our rubber toughened super glue. And this is what we recommend you use to install Neopads. I also have some Neopad items here. Let's go to our super, our medium up close. There you go. Okay. So here we go. We have... A couple things that are Neopad specific. Well, I forgot to mention a spring hook and a screwdriver, really just for installation. That's all. Very cool. Um, but I have three different types of Neopad spuds. There is a standard spud, which is when you buy a Neopad, whether it be set or individually, a standard spud is installed already. Okay. Very the good. base on this is about a half millimeter. The medium height spud, uh, the base height on that is about a millimeter, and then the tall spud, which is about a millimeter and a half. So you have some variants of heights. Uh, if you need extra height, or let's say you don't have the medium or the tall, and you have uh, our flute, uh, Music Medic flute pad washers, these are great shims. And we've done a couple of videos on these. And in fact, yes. for our free clinic, which is about Neopads, December 7th, I will talk about, there it is right there, December 7th, live on Zoom, I will talk about using the uh, the flute pad washers for shims and, and in what particular cases you might do that. So let's talk a little bit about sizing. I have a pad cup here. I've pre-prepped it. You notice I've cleaned the center portion. Very, very important. Okay, with Neopads, we want to make sure we clean up any of the excess glue. Uh, so that's where I might use a scraper or bristle disc or this stuff right here, which is, like I said, that debonder, and it's good for loosening up any old adhesive. Uh, even, even shellac? Even shellac. It'll do it on shellac as well. Uh, cool. A little bit of heat too helps kind of clean that up in there. You can do the old heat and wipe. We talked about that earlier. Uh, so you can heat this pad cup up with your torch or your air torch and then wipe it out. That helps with a lot of times removing hot glue where okay. it tends to be very sticky. Any chance of fumes being a problem with heating up? The... Always. Always. you got to watch out for that when you're doing this. Uh, although it shouldn't be that bad. When you're heating this up, yes, you do want to be very careful. You know, obviously take special safety precautions. Um, but yes, and also one thing to watch out for is this stuff is uh, can be rough on lacquered surfaces, especially if it's a relacquer. So be very careful not to get this on lacquered surfaces. Uh, another way is just to scrape it out using your scraper or an old pad slick. So I make sure I clean off the center portion where that spud is going to be glued to. And then I make sure I clean that inner rim. This is very, very important for that self-leveling capability of the Neopad. All right, so let's talk about Neopad sizing. Neopad sizing is a little different than a traditional 
pad sizing. If I take a traditional pad sizing and I have something like this, this is what I would consider to be a good pad fit. Okay, I don't want to push this in all the way because it might get stuck. If that happens with a traditional pad, I could just pop it back out. So with a Neopad, this fit is a little too big. It doesn't allow that Neopad to tilt back and forth. What we suggest is going about under about a half a millimeter. So you have plenty of room all the way around. You notice this guy actually slides back and forth in the pad cup. Mm. If this were a traditional pad fit, and we're going to talk about traditional pad fit during my uh, day course, padding and dry fitting day course. Yes. There, there it is, is right there. Uh, but I will talk about proper uh, traditional pad fit. If this were a traditional pad, this would be too small. Mm. Okay, Way too small. But for a Neopad, believe it or not, as long as this pad area covers the tone hole, it will work. Okay, It will self-level. I don't want to go with one that's that small, so I'm going to go with one that is, you can see I have just a little bit, plenty of room all the way around. Okay, So I've picked my diameter. Now I have to pick my height. The great thing about Neopads is the Neopad itself, all Neopads are just one thickness. Okay, So what you need to do is just stock the different sizes of spuds or shims. Okay? So the easy way to tell if you have the correct height is you put the pad in the pad cup and I'm going to just see if it tilts back and forth. I don't have anything on this. Some pad cups, depending on their depth, need a slightly taller spud. So I just took out the standard spud. I'm going to move up to the medium spud. Now one important thing when you install these, I'm going to go to my up close world's largest Neopad. Mm. Okay, you can see there, you see this little slot right there? This is in the back of the actual pad. The, the, um, the spud itself is going to have a little pin. There it is. That pin needs to fit into this slot. So when you install the Neopad onto a new spud, I'm going to hold my spud with the pin facing directly at me, directly north. I'm going to orient my pad so that the slot is facing north and south, and then it's just a matter of snapping it again like so. Okay, now I can go back in and dry fit to see. I don't have a lot. Hmm. Okay, still not enough. This is a fairly deep pad cup, so I'm going to go up to my medium height, or sorry, my tall spud. Again, I'm going to take that pin, Line it directly north. Line that slot up. There we go. Snaps in like so. And oh yeah, there it is. A lot of tilt there. A lot of tilt. This is going to work. Okay. So now that I've selected not only my correct diameter of pad, I've collected, uh, selected my correct height of base, I can install. This is the glue that we're going to be using. This is our rubber tough and glue. A dab will do you. Okay. Rich, just a dab. I'm curious as to see a dab. Oh, I'm going to show you. Just you wait. Okay, so here it is. This is exactly how much glue I'm going to use to install this pad. That's it. Hmm. Okay, one more. It's not that much. Looks like a little ghost. Just a little go. Put a little, little smiley face. There it is. Happy Halloween! <laughs> yes, okay, that is too much right there. That line, too much. Those two dots, perfect. Okay, so I use just a dab. You see, doesn't matter, and if you're something to think about, doesn't matter the size of the Neopad, okay, mm. whether you're using a large one or a small one, the dab is the same. Okay. And okay, you're just trying to fill up the back of that spud. So I'm going to apply just a little bit to the back of the spud. So you apply that right to the back of the plastic right spud. Right to the back of the plastic spud, okay. just like so. There it is. Now this bottle says... About 20 to 45 seconds. That's how much working time you have before it cures. Not going to rush too much. Okay. Notice when I install the pad, I'm keeping my fingers kind of a north, south, east, west position. I can feel both the pad rim and the pad itself, and this helps center that pad so that it doesn't rub up against the inside of the rim. If it does, that could interfere with its self-leveling capabilities. This also allows me to see if the pad, if there's any obstructions, maybe I use too much glue. Some of that glue has oozed out, and that was the right amount. Everything should be good to go. Depending on the type of pad cup you may be using, uh, if you're putting it in like maybe a King Super 20 that has a fairly deep, I mean, they're, they're really deep. They're like cone-shaped. Um, you, I would allow at least a minute or two for that glue to fully cure. Okay. Um, other than that, 20 to 45 seconds is really all you need. And you're good to go. You can see the pads installed. I still have my, my tilting. There's no obstructions, even all the way around. I'm pretty much done. Okay? Wow. If you're a repair technician, you put this key on the horn and you go out and take like an extra three-hour lunch. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, don't let the boss know. Okay, don't let them know you're watching this either. And also, write in Neo, hashtag Neovember. Yes. Right now, idea. please. Yep. Very quickly. We'll wait. If you take Neovember, put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win something. Something. 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up, as well as our saxophone smackdown on february 23 and 24 we showed that calendar before that's right there we are so we're done on this as far as the installation if this were a traditional pad we would then install this onto the instrument we would have to use all of the heating methods and leveling and floating it in there with neopads they level themselves i have a horn here whoops oh hey -o. that has oh, yeah, so. <laughs> hi oh and we're back it has neopads in it let me change there so let me put now ryan i see that glide. you uh, this is a Wilmington Alto that you have the nail pads in. That's an intermediate. Intermediate. Mm. Oh, it's like uh, that's an intermediate level horn. What about student horns? Can they, they are, can they oh, put? Yes. Can technicians or even home technicians put these into a student level instrument? Absolutely, they are fantastic for student horns. Um, we've had uh, a lot of our customers, technicians, put them in uh, typical like a Yamaha YAS twenty three. Mm -hmm. uh, it works out great in those instruments. So yeah, it's great for, for student horn, intermediate, even pro players. I yeah. know one that's in this room right now that has Neopads in his horn. Oh, me. Uh, yes, you. Yes. I am definitely not the pro player. <laughs> uh, I am the pro tech. Yeah. Judge me on my tech skills. Yeah, um, yeah I have a yeah. man. I've been using them for, uh, we're going on a year and a half now. Right. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Rich is our, our uh, the guinea pig. involuntarily <laughs> guinea pig. Yeah, we, we make him do this. <laughs> So here we are, we have our Neo pads in this instrument right here. Um, and you'll notice I can move this pad. You can see how it actually tilts back and forth. And there we go, there it is tilting, okay? So what happens is I'll push this, and now I'm heavy on this side over here. When this pad comes down, it's gonna hit first where it's heavy, and then that self-leveling capability is gonna kick in and it's going to whoop, level itself. And now it's in that position, okay? What I've been saying is that pad has a little bit of friction in there. It's not like flopping around all loose, okay? It's not like trying to run a marathon in flip-flops, mm -hmm. okay? Um, once that pad is level, there we go, hitting right there, it's in that position. So it's going to come down and hit like a traditional pad. The only thing you have to do is like with traditional pads is now time them together. This has a neopad in it. This has a neopad in it, as you can see. And I've timed them together. Boom, there we are. Very good, Ryan. I have a couple of questions for sure, you. Sure, lay it on me. Um, do you guys have a Neopad set for a Selmer Super 80, Super Action 80? We probably do, yes. In fact, if you go onto the website, um, it should be in our, under our pad wizard. They scroll all the way down. There'll be Neopad sets available for alto, tenor, and baritone. Yes, that's uh, right. When, when you're in the pad set wizard, you got to scroll down. Scroll all the scroll way down. All the way down. Yep, it's on there. We just did a video. Chris and I, we, we, uh, we did some uh, video. There's going to be a video soon showing people how to order a Neopad set, how to use our pad set wizard, and most importantly, how to start a music medic account. Oh, very cool. Which I did. <laughs> I did. I've been working here for a while, and I finally have a music medic account. I've made the big time. Yeah, things are looking up for you. Uh, I'm in the money. <laughs> <Ha>! <laughs> Uh, let's see, I've got a couple other questions from the chat here. How do these compare to the original summer pads? And will the sound change? Can they be cleaned? And so there's three questions okay. here. How do they how do they compare to the original summer pads? Okay. Yep, yep. Will the sound change? Number two. Mm -hmm. And can they be cleaned with uh, a Q-tip and lemon oil. Yes, Q-tip and lemon oil, they just like traditional leather pads, you can clean them off with, with you know, probably, yeah, I've heard of people using lemon pledge, uh, whatever. Whatever a standard tan pad, you can also clean these. Um, as far as how do they compare to the traditional summer pads that were in one, uh, I can guarantee these will last much, much longer. Okay. And I know you've you've experienced this as well. Um, because of that self-leveling capability, it has that center pressure, which is a, another huge feature of the Neopad. Um, so it tends to disperse that tone hole pressure on the pad surface evenly. So it doesn't develop super deep seats. In certain areas, it develops a very nice, even seat, uh, and it levels themselves. Yes. Uh, as far as the sound, uh, there shouldn't be that big of a sound difference. Um, the as big it, thing is going to be your key heights. Yes. That's that, going to possibly change. Obviously, if you're taking all the pads out, you're probably doing material. So that's going to be probably a bigger change than 
the actual pad themselves. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, and I know you internet guys will, is I think Selmer at that time, if it's the Super Action 80, they were probably using metal resonators, metal riveted resonators, and I do believe yes, they were. that they had a tendency to rust and corrode. That is actually, yeah, that was, okay. that's my direct experience. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, and like I say, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you'll notice with the Neopad, the plastic reso is not going to rust or corrode. Yes. So yep. you got that going for you. Yeah, you do. I, I, <laughs> so that's I, something. I would say as far as sound change, it's there's no sound change. You do have a little bit of vibration change you, because of the spud is glued into the cup versus the whole pad surface. So the instrument doesn't vibrate in the same way as a traditional sax pad. So it has a little different feel under your fingers. That's not yeah. That's not the same as sound. And then finally, in terms of response, response is pretty gosh darn good yeah and it stays good because the pads level the themselves pads level themselves yeah you take a bump or a knock you're out on a gig you know maybe you've had one or two many you know cheer wines or whatever you're drinking sure you know uh, uh shastas colas or whatever it is you're drinking your rc colas mm -hmm. and then you know it gets bumped that neopad is going to level itself in that new position especially if you look at a key like this down here. This is one that you notice no key guard. It gets bumped, mm -hmm. especially with this that's held closed. Now you're not playing your low B and your low B flat. Uh, Neopad, it gets bumped. Guess what? It's going to acclimate itself to being in that new position, and it's going to self-level. These are great questions. Man, we've got a lot of viewer interaction here. Yeah, I've got I got a couple more questions for Bring you. Bring it on. Uh, Lay it on me. Uh, so that that was that was a good one. I. I um, uh, bip, 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 bip. You do have, of course, your materials are going to wear out over time if you're a, if you're a pro player. So you're going to have to account for that. The, you, what I've found so far in the year and a half of playing them is that the materials will wear out before right. the, yep. pa the pad actually wears out. So you, you're still going to have to do maintenance on your instrument. The uh, Javier is asking if we have a Neopad with a metal resonator. <sighs> Very soon we're 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 working on it. We're working on it. Mm -hmm. Javier, uh, bear with us. Yeah, we're working on the the option of having a metal resonator because I know players and technicians like having options. They do, and, and that's what's cool about Neopads because you you adhere the. Oh, I just did he? Why did he just stop talking? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, because you put the spud in the cup. Eventually, once we have metal resonators, you'll be able to change out your whole pad set. Yeah, just. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, it's quick enough. You can do it in between solos, Rich. You okay, can change probably. all your pads out in between <laughs> solos. Boom, you're 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 in. That's right. You know. That's right. Different so. sound. Very cool. I'm not saying you should, but you could. Uh, Pedro's asking, would they have a tendency to warp over time? No, this this firm backing is. I mean, you can see it has some some structure to it. I see more warping out of traditional pads when you're using a cardboard backing like this, mm -hmm. uh, even other brands that have maybe stif stiffer backings to them. But uh, yeah, I have not experienced a warp. I, I, I do tell people that we've tested this out fairly extensively. We, we put uh, uh, Neopads in our aptly named Pad Whacker, yes. which is our machine for testing it out. It's basically a body tube with uh, the keys. They're sprung heavily shut. There's a mechanism that comes, opens them up, and then as that mechanism releases, those pads slam shut. So it's just doing this over and over and over again in your right hand of a saxophone. Um, I would tell people that we we hit up a million wax, and I was actually corrected. It's more than six million wax. Six million wax. We tested a set of pads. We would get in there. We would try to mimic real-life circumstances like spraying them with water to mimic, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know uh, humidity and, you know, players yeah. spit uh, and whatnot, um, and they lasted the entire time. In fact, the mechanism of the saxophone, test saxophone that we were using, failed before the actual pad themselves. That's right. The metal parts. Yeah, the metal parts out. of the saxophone, the brass and the steel, failed of it just going over and over and over again, six million wax, not all at one time. But, you know, over the course of months and months and months, like I said, two years of development and testing uh, of this product. Uh, and we worked on everything. This, this amount of friction here in this self-leveling capability, we worked on for quite a while. Um, you know, we yes. had different, different uh, you know, different types, different prototypes with different amounts of 
tension in that, that pivoting mechanism in the back of a Neopad, uh, we decided this, for all intents and purposes, was the best feeling and the best sounding. We are very sensitive to pad noise here yes. in the pro shop. Um, dare I say oversensitive. In fact, I use the term over potty trained quite a bit when I talk about uh, people and their tendencies about pad noise. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm not, not saying you, Rich. I'm not saying you. <laughs> Just because you're in the room and you're the problem of this. No, I can't. I can't. But no, we are very sensitive to pad noise. Yes. And we, we noticed that the, the nail pad sound is like a traditional pad sound. It's not like a hard clicky clackety, yes. like your dog running on your, your tile floor with nails that are too long. Yes. It's not like that whatsoever. It sounds like a... Saxophone. Regular pad, yeah. Regular pad, regular saxophone. The other thing I would say, as far as uh, real life experience in terms of the actual, some players have a tendency to maybe squeeze more mm -hmm. firmly, or if you're playing in a, a live setting where you're like hitting the saxophone or kind of abusing it in the in a natural way, uh, I haven't seen the pads fail in in at least a, an entire season of performance. Mm -hmm. So that's. You're outside, you're moving around, dancing around. If you're playing some sort of commercial gig or I played like a what, avant garde jazz gig where you had to make, you know, crazy yeah. overtones oh, and use yeah. the saxophone as a percussion instrument. And I was very heavy on the instrument and the next downright day, negligent the, almost. The next day say. and the next day played another, you know, show and it was fine. I, I so uh in terms of abusing abusing the pads that the way that we saxophonists do, neo pads seem to be able to hold up just well, just you know, just as good as a traditional pad, which I'm excited about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me see. Any more? These are fantastic, fantastic, fantastic questions. questions. Everyone on here should sign up for our free neo pad course, December seventh. I think so. Live Zoom. You sign up on the website. We're going to send you that Zoom link. It's completely free. You guys are going to hear more about this. Uh, and if you're in yeah. another country and you're not in the same time zone, depending on how many people we have, it's easy for us to send the recording. Yeah, well, the absolutely. We'll record it and we can send you that. You guys can watch it at your leisure. At your leisure. At your leisure. It's a free Neopad clinic. So if you're curious about Neopads, if you're curious on how to install them, if you're a repair technician or if you're even an amateur technician, check out that December clinic. Make sure you also take the hashtag Neovember. Put that in the comments below. That'll give you a chance to win a prize, a discount on any of the courses that we have coming up, including our SAC Smackdown, February 23 and 24. 2024 and then also please like share and subscribe that's going to give you a chance to be notified click the bell make sure you have uh, all the things that are coming up with music medic and all of the new inventions as well as any information on how these pads are going we're really excited about it so thank you guys so much for watching brian thank you for this excellent yes. demonstration post this video to your facebook and rich will send you a dollar that's right <laughs> no he won't I'll but, do, but do, it anyway. do it anyway do it anyway all right, thank you guys so much. We'll be back next week with how to check a saxophone neck for leaks. And until next time, happy repairing.